direct or indirect read is a matter of burning importance at many sites, particularly because the behaviour is changing without that much publicity. What happens is that Oracle decides at runtime which method to use. The choice is influenced by largely static factors such as optimizer statistics, but also by the current situation of the database buffer cache. This can result in instability. Your code runs one way today, another way tomorrow. And by the way, before you ask, profiles, stored outlines, SQL plan baselines, even hints may well not help at all. I'll explain why shortly. Perhaps most disturbingly, there are even differences between different patch sets, never mind the differences between releases. So what is an indirect read? It is the I.O. method that historically was usually used. It was only parallel query that didn't use it. Session server processes read blocks from disk into cache, and the SQL processing continues from there as the projected columns of the selected rows are transferred into the session PGA memory. There are, of course, a number of wait events that can occur as we read from disk, typically DB file scattered read, DB file sequential read, and then more wait events as we write to and read from the cache. Free buffer waits, cache buffers chains latch, buffer busy waits, of course. But overall, indirect reads via the cache is usually a good thing. Of course, the session that first reads the block may have problems, but from then on the data is there in memory for reuse. But the session by the session that first read it, or indeed by anyone else. So let's see how indirect read actually works. I'll begin by flushing the buffer cache to make sure we have a clean starting point. I'm also going to enable the autotrace facility so that we can see the execution statistics. And now run a simple query. Select count ename from scott.m. There is only one way to run that query. There is no index on ename. This will be a full table scan. And we see the effects. Two physical reads, three consistent gets. So we have to read blocks from disk into memory and then transfer them from buffer cache to PGA for any further processing. I'll run the query again. Zero physical reads. Why? Because the data is already in memory. Run it a third time. Still no physical reads. So that is indirect I.O. Direct read is very different. The session reads blocks from the disk into PGA, bypassing the cache. This can be very good. Um, it will typically be extremely fast. There's no messing about in the buffer cache, no impacts on other sessions. But what if you, or another session, need to access the same blocks again? I'll run a slightly different query, and we'll see the effects. Select county name from Big Amp. This is basically the same table, but with many more rows. It takes a bit longer, and we see that query required 24,000 physical reads, 48,000 reads from memory. Run the query a second time, pretty much exactly the same. Run it a third time, the same again. So every time I'm reading that table, every time I'm executing that query, the data is coming from disk every time. There is another issue. Not only do we get direct path read weights, which one would hope would be a lot less than the weight events for indirect I.O., we also have an object checkpoint. All dirty buffers of the object in the cache must be flushed to disk before the direct read can proceed. If that were not done, we would be getting incorrect information. And for those of you using Rack, remember that that segment checkpoint is in fact a global weight event. All the instances must flush dirty buffers to disk for that one segment. But the main principle is that blocks are not cached for reuse. So run the query once. It's fast. It doesn't impact it on impact anyone else. Run the query several times and it may be a lot less efficient. So, how is the decision between direct and indirect read actually made? 
You've seen that of my two queries, even though they were both full table scans, Oracle decided that one should be direct, the other indirect. Why? Firstly, the decision is very much version sensitive. It's based on a lot of hidden parameters. The most critical is this one, underscore serial direct read. Take a quick look at it. And you see that in the release I'm using, which is 12.1, underscore serial direct read defaults to auto. The defaults change from release to release. They even changed between 11.201 and 11.202. But with the current release on auto by default, Oracle will decide whether to use direct or indirect read. And it will decide at execution time. This makes it a bit unpredictable. The cost-based optimizer does not consider this in the current release. The decision is made by the SQL execution engine. The algorithm Oracle uses has, of course, not been published and probably never will be. But reverse engineering it, which many people have attempted to do, suggests that it is based on the size of the object relative to the cache and also on the current cache contents. So, what can you do? First off, you must be aware of the problem. Monitor your critical sequels. Look at the patterns of wait events. Look at the changes in the patterns of I.O. on your system. See how different queries are running under different circumstances. If you don't like what Oracle is doing, well, the hacker's way is to set some of the underscore parameters at the session level or the instance level. That may be useful for testing, but of course we would never feel comfortable recommending that you set these things on a production system. The clever solution is to tune the SQL. There are very few operations that can actually use direct I.O., principally full table scan and index fast full scan. They can do direct read. This is going to have a big effect on index nested loops as against hash joins. So tune your SQL to push the optimizer towards developing plans that will give you the pattern of I.O. that you want. Why do you have to do this? Well, the theory is that Uncle Oracle is always right and will make the best decision. Well, usually he will, but sometimes he won't.